Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy, and welcome back once again to Silver Republic. This week, uh, we're working on a couple of pretty disparate projects. This is one of those classic scenarios where you come into it thinking that you have an idea for an episode, and in the end, what you really have is an idea for half of an episode. So you kind of have to um, go through your other ideas for projects and figure out what else might happen to be half an episode rather than an episode. So here we are working on a couple of different areas that I guess kind of thematically or chronologically, I guess would be a better way to say this. Chronologically, these are very similar projects. What we're working on are kind of the areas of development directly outside of the colonial old town and just on different sides of the city. Um, So this first area that we are working on is you can see the graveyard kind of off to the side. We're kind of near the fishing docks or near this segment of the old city walls and uh, just kind of filling in this big empty space that has been staring me uh, right in the eyes for several episodes at this point. Um, just kind of filling it out now with, um, well, this is, this is about the part of the series now where this, um, this project transitions from a, um, a good hearted attempt at making a, um, Spanish colonial Caribbean city into a blatant commercial for the Patreon account of, uh, City Skylines asset creator, Peter Barr. Uh, if you know Peter Barr, I'm sure you have seen his assets before. He's a wonderful, very talented creator. Uh, makes a lot of communist stuff from various places. I have already used a lot of his assets in this series. And at this point, um, around now is when the series had premiered and people had started to reach out to me um, saying that they would either make assets for me or that they already had assets for me and in this case peter reached out to me uh and or no actually no sorry peter did not reach out to me somebody else reached out to me and told me that peter had all these assets so i joined peter Barr's patreon and um got access to all of these as early access uh exclusives and uh uh, put them all into my city and then reached out to him and got a ton more uh, of just random stuff that he's either working on or just made privately for himself so first and foremost thank you peter these are fantastic assets and the series is much better from this point on um i think everything really works way better from this point forward uh and additionally folks out there in listener land in viewer land in the city skylines community i highly recommend that you go to I think it is patreon.com slash Peter Barr and uh, give Peter Barr a couple bucks a month and get access to these as well because these are just wildly ahead of what I had access to before. Um, additionally, this is about the part of the series where um, I get in touch with uh, Bastet, uh, who is a City Skylines um, Medici, uh, who, who basically I believe is just in deep with every asset creator in the entire community getting them to make him the stuff that he wants for his project which just out of sheer coincidence and wild luck uh, is also what my project is uh he's also working on a a um havana inspired uh project a cuba inspired project so he is commissioning just like a wild amount of very cool stuff that fits very perfectly into this project Anyway, uh, that's kind of a lot of what you're seeing here is either Peter Barr stuff or Bastet stuff. Um, A lot of these are really nice, like like medium rise buildings. I guess I don't know if medium rise is actually the right terminology for it, but like what you're looking at right now, this size of building, I get a lot of really good versions of that uh, that are at the right level of like like grit on them like something i find a lot in the in the uh workshop that's kind of frustrating in this project and in general is that people make their assets as though the thing was built yesterday 
and so everything comes out looking really squeaky clean and 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 pristine and crispy and that's nice and it looks cool but uh, it doesn't ever really look very realistic um so i'm happy that a lot of these assets that i got for bastet have like a good amount of grit and grime on them to like really make it sink into this environment a little bit more with all of the the mud and the moss and the and these you know corrugated metal and the blue tarps and all that like you really need stuff to look pretty messy here to like actually fit in properly uh so now over here i'm just kind of like filling out a bit of the slum area that also had been left empty for a while um nothing super unique happening here except to say that this is the first instance of these uh barrio latino assets that got released uh, a couple of months ago now uh, these were made by the latino city skylines creator community i think they have like a a twitch page uh this will come as no surprise to you but bastet is in deep with them as well uh seems to be pretty good friends with them uh and that is kind of how i got linked up with this set i believe he's the one who showed it to me but anyway they're they're a really nice set of kind of like nicely halfway between um slum housing and city housing to kind of like really ease that transition a lot this is important by the way plot wise uh we'll come back to this in a later project i believe but basically i'm trying to add a little bit of politics uh into the series now by kind of like adding uh graffiti and and flags and banners around the slum area to kind of show like in this post-communist era who in the city you know is still sympathetic to the cause of communism and who isn't and so you'll see a lot uh in this part of town you'll see a lot of you know socialist communist graffiti and uh in the next half of the episode you'll see a part of the city where you'll see that stuff um you know painted over covered over um you know covered in ads and things like that um over here, uh, we are back at the first thing that we built in the series, which is that interchange. I'm adding a little extra road coming off of it to go into this little kind of mountainside community here that I don't really do a lot of work on in this episode. I just kind of do a little bit to um, just kind of set the scene for myself for the next episode. I believe it's the next episode or the one after that that I come back to this. But in any event, I do this a lot where I kind of... Um, I know what I want to do in a place uh, as I'm working on a different project. And so rather than starting on the new project, uh, I just kind of like put down a little bit of stuff just to kind of remind myself later when I come back to the area to just look at it and be like, oh, this was what I wanted to do over here. This is important. Uh, this is the first gas station in the city. Um you know, for a city that has so many cars, uh, it is a mostly car dependent city. There is some good transit options, but you know, a lot of cars, um, and a lot of like old cars. So I imagine like specifically these sort of gas stations would also be repair shops that specialize in fixing extremely old cars. But I'm using kind of these like vintage gas station assets, as well as some of these sort of like rusty corrugated metal things kind of like mixing them together to make it look like this this gas station maybe like predates the communist re revolution and it's sort of like it's a little bit um it's a little bit old and outdated it's a little bit falling apart and then it's a little bit kind of like put back together with stuff that was available stuff that was around so i have these like water tanks that i imagine are maybe like holding fuel or something i don't know um but that was basically the idea here and this is overly detailed because um i wanted to take a cool screenshot of it um, for the for the thumbnail for this episode and then i don't even think it ended up being the thumbnail i think i just used this for a reddit post and that's kind of it uh but whatever sometimes it's nice to just kind of like get in deep and really tweak out on a super detailed little thing uh, over here, you know, this is kind of what I was talking about of putting down a little bit of what this neighborhood is going to look like just to come back and remind myself later this was what the idea was. And the idea is that this is kind of like where the detached low residential housing will begin. 
uh, and it will kind of like stretch up into this mountainside. Uh, but we are kind of coming up to the commercial break right now. When we come back, we are working on a different part of the city, but a similar idea. And I'm so excited for you guys to see it because this is what this has all kind of been leading to in a very significant way. So see you then. And welcome back. We are now kind of on the other side of the city. You can see we are behind the Capitol building. We are behind what I had at the time said was the presidential palace and have now decided is not the presidential palace. I can't remember if I said that in the last episode or not. In any event, it's not the presidential palace anymore. It is the uh, Bureau of Trade. Um, the presidential palace doesn't exist yet. I don't know where it is yet. Um, I'll figure that out at a later date. But for now, it's not that. What we're working on here is um, probably my favorite place in the city at this at this stage. Um, what this is is sort of a like a legacy, um, like a legacy tourism entertainment district, right? This is kind of like this would be from the golden age of San Felipe, quote unquote. This would be from like when the when the city was a destination for tourists in the pre-communist age uh these are all kind of from just before the revolution and um kind of like i'm I, what i'm trying for here is a little bit of like this vibe of like decaying glamour right so it's all these hotels and 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 buildings that are like decorated and ornate and 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 really well appointed there's like beautiful colorful tiles everywhere and big pools and like you know this this building uh has like nice big pillars and stairs and stuff everything looks really grand around here right but it's all kind of like pretty old too and that's kind of what i was trying to go for here um and i think this is kind of this will be explained further in you know when we start getting to the storytelling element of this series and start really getting in deep to the you know the history and the lore and whatever but i think that when it comes to the communist revolution and and the factors that led to it i think this neighborhood is going to play a really major major role uh and I'll kind of just leave it at that, I suppose. Um, but basically, the way I see it is that, um, you know, this was, you know, in a, in a later episode, you, I'll build kind of like a passenger port right next to this. And that'll kind of explain why it is here specifically that this neighborhood exists. But basically, the idea is that these are all kind of like the these are all the hotels and casinos and restaurants and bars and stuff that, you um, you know, maybe like before the revolution, this was where people were traveling to. After the revolution, this was maybe converted into a lot of housing, or maybe it was, um, maybe it became still a, a, a sort of a vacation destination, but now for like, uh, you know, dignitaries and, 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 you know, important mucky mucks from other communist nations. I don't know, something like that. We'll think about it a little bit and come back to it when it's, when it's more important. Uh, but what I was thinking was that nowadays, you know, in the modern, uh, San Felipe, this is now kind of like turning back into a big tourist destination because as you'll see in kind of like later projects, like most of the people who visit this country on vacation are going to be staying at kind of like big resorts outside of the city. The city isn't necessarily where, you know, vacationers are staying. But what I was thinking was that now in sort of like a more modern age, a like post Instagram, you know, post travel vlog uh, era, this is where most people are trying to st or like most young people are trying to stay when they come to visit now is specifically this neighborhood of San Felipe. Like, so I wanted to make everything like really, really pretty and really, really like Instagrammable and, and, and what have you. This building is so cool. This is um, another uh, Bastet uh, commissioned project. It's I think it's from Havana. I think it is actually near the port in real life. It's just a cool, like, really, uh, like, 
funky Latin art deco sort of look. Uh, don't really know much else about it. I think in universe, I'm just going to say it's like some sort of an office building. I don't think it's anything super important. Uh, I mean, it could be a hotel or a casino because everything else around here is, and I'm not necessarily opposed to that idea. I just wasn't really necessarily thinking about it as anything but a generic office building. But I tried to kind of, I have around here, the, 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 the hills start to get really intense. So, um, I had to put it on to kind of this big retaining wall situation and like put fencing around it and stuff. I built a lot of parking around the back to kind of like justify why they would have built up this whole thing into a big cube. And then I realized that this sidewalk here is like super steep. And so I decided to use these step assets the way that they're actually intended to be used. I've been using these forever just as sort of a, a easy, quick, um, uh, just ploppable asphalt sort of thing. Uh, but I, I realized when I looked at the workshop page for them that the idea was at some stage to make steps out of them. So I went ahead and did that there, and I think it actually turns out pretty cool and uh, nice enough that I actually do it again in another episode pretty soon. Uh, over here, of course, it would not be a Silver Republic episode if I didn't do some sort of a quick intersection situation here. Um, you know, the the passenger port is going to be down here. So what I was thinking was like, well, the passenger port is down here and also the modern industrial port is going to be down this way as well. So what I'm trying to do is design this big boulevard here to um, kind of prioritize traffic going in and out of these ports and nowhere else. Like the idea is that you don't want these being used as arteries for people going to anywhere but the ports and then into the commercial districts that the ports are getting supplies to uh, slash in a later, later, later episode uh, up to the highway to get to the rest of the Island. This will all make sense in later episodes, but I just wanted to kind of explain why uh, every, pretty much every turn on this boulevard doesn't allow you to, uh, to turn into a neighborhood. <laughs> So now down here, I'm kind of working a bit more on the the upper boulevard here. And this kind of like leads down past the former presidential palace down into that kind of roundabout with the Che Guevara-ish memorial in it. And just kind of trying to keep these things at a very sweet spot for um, detailing, right? I'm trying not to get too in the weeds on this because it's very easy to. Um, you know, like I said in the last episode, like I start to really, really enjoy these kind of like pools and, and back areas and stuff. And, and I find it, uh, after a little while, like very easy to just kind of like lose myself in these projects and just kind of go a little wild. So I'm trying my best to, um, you know, trying to keep my cool, I suppose would be the way to say this, um, just using a lot of tiles and a lot of, um, you know, other types of surfaces, you know, just in, in some attempt to kind of, uh, differentiate the roofs from each other. And in some cases, um, you know, make these roofs, um, like a little darker, something that I, something that's a real pet peeve of mine in this game and in workshop assets, especially older ones is when they are too bright and different people obviously have different standards of too bright. And I think that my standards tend to be a bit, uh, more intense than others. I find things to be, you know, too bright at a pretty bright space. So, um, you know, a lot of these kind of, I think they're older assets. They might actually not be these, uh, art deco Miami buildings. Um, Whatever the case may be, I, I find them a bit too bright overall. So I kind of put these dull, dark gray roofs on them to kind of um, try to remedy that a little bit. The bodies of them, the bodies, the facades of them are still a bit bright for my liking. But, you know, it is what it is. And I think when, when the sun is kind of like set the right way, I, I don't think it ends up actually being too big of a problem. And otherwise, just kind of trying to uh, do a little bit of generic backyarding around here, just throwing some trees here and there. This, I have these um, 
the balustrades that were from the uh, the old pup, uh, pug gaming uh, Project Monaco uh, series, uh, and they actually end up fitting perfectly with this uh, Art Deco building here. And uh, otherwise, we're kind of coming up on the end of the episode here, so let's do a quick little commercial. I want to thank you so much for watching my show. My name is Jeremy. You could find me on Twitter at, at Jeremy Thunder. Uh, you can check out my podcast. It's called Generation Loss. Uh, if you like my show and you want to support me, in the description of the episode, you can find a Buy Me a Coffee link where you can uh, do kind of like a one time donation and quote unquote buy me a coffee. You won't be buying me a coffee, you'll just be giving me a tip, uh, which I will probably just. Uh, forget about to be perfectly honest with you uh and uh if you want to become a channel member you can do a kind of like a recurring uh monthly donation of 399 and if you do that you get early access to every single episode of every single series that i do uh and i I guess i kind of like also prioritize um responding to your comments if you're a channel member but that's uh not really a promise or a guarantee um but yeah, become a channel member. It's 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 really a pretty good it's a pretty good deal. Uh, if I do say so myself, I tend to put up a lot of episodes in chunks. Uh, you'll be pretty far ahead of your other uh, City Skyline series watching peers. Anyway, that's it, folks. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week.